everybody. I hope you guys can hear me and see me okay and stuff. For you guys that don't know who I am, I'm Jeanette from Boricua Sewing and Crafts. And I am back on my regular Mac. And I am hoping that I have no technical difficulties with, um, with my iMac this time and stuff. I see people are already on. And um, I kept thinking about different topics to try. And I was actually going to use my MacBook. But I have been having like a struck of bad luck today. Um, I tried to embroider some new designs. Um, they did not come out as nice as I wanted to. This is one design that I am working on right now. Let me try to put it so that you guys can see it. Oh, doesn't look good. Okay, this is a dinner napkin. Sorry. This is a dinner napkin design that I am working on. And um, I don't like the way it came out. And, um, you know, it's, it's a nice design, but I think my colors are off. So um, it's not for anybody in particular. It's just me playing around with brilliance and, um, you know, buying frames and trying to get some nice brand new um, dinner napkin designs and stuff. So I figured I would just, um, while I was playing around with brilliance, I know that some of you guys have questions about it. So I figured this would be a pretty good, um, you know, time for me to talk to you guys about some of the things um, that I do on in brilliance. So one of the things that I kind of like about it and stuff, I do see that we have a bunch of people um, in the chat and um, and I see we got some new folks too and stuff. I see Yolanda. Hey, Black Doll. How you doing? Hey, Porsche, Porta, Robin. I see Guinea. Hey, just seems right. It's been a minute since we've seen you. How you doing? Hey, Amanda. Hey, Norma. Hey, Cheryl. I see Robin, Amanda, Yolanda, Shirley, Iris. Hey, Crafty Puerto Rican. How you doing? Oh, and if you guys don't know, okay, um, you know, I love watching in raw print now. And that's a, a, you know, a channel by Liliana. And she has been in the embroidery business for over 25 years. She bought a sublimation printer. And I know I was on and the Crafty Puerto Rican was on and we were watching her. And she did this beautiful design she did her logo and it's like she um embroidered it and then she put it on the heat press with the sublimation it came out gorgeous 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 you guys gotta check that out um she does her videos all in spanish but if you look through it and you see what she did i was just like oh so she got me motivated okay because i have a sawgrass 500 and I try to get into the sublimation, but it kind of like, it's just sitting there right now. Man, it is hot because I got the light on me. But anyway, um, it's just sitting there because one of the things that I don't like about sublimation is that it's really like an unforgiving craft. And what I mean by that is when you mess up, you just mess up. It's done. It's over. There's no do over, no nothing. Okay. So I'm just not a fan of that because I feel like, you know, I was wasting a lot of material while I was trying to learn it. And, you know, you guys know me, I'm pretty, um, I'm pretty hefty at, at keeping my wallet, you know, closed. So I kind of like always saw it as, as things, you know, money going out the window. So, you know, what I found easy, I kind of like stuck with was like the mugs, okay? And I've done some shirts, but there have been some other things that I wanted to try. But the sublimation, it's like you really have to be very precise and stuff. But I will tell you, after watching her, I kind of like said, all right, Janet, you got the equipment. It's just sitting there. I don't want, you know, and here I am telling people, don't be afraid of your embroidery machines go for it and then i'm looking at my sublimation printer and i'm i'm doing exactly what some people do ain't that something so it's like you always give people advice sometimes you don't even take your own advice so i'm just gonna suck it up like i tell people to do and i'm going to tackle that sublimation printer so i already told myself i'm gonna put some money aside and i'm just gonna buy nothing but um sublimation brank uh brank blanks blanks so that i could just try different things and if it works it works if it doesn't then I, I know that these are just blanks that i bought just so that i can learn and practice 
But um, she got me motivated. She really did. And she even like called me out because when I told her, oh, that looks nice. Um, she knows me. We, we know each other for quite some time. And um, she was like, you got that sublimation printer. You <laughs> so we think with this. And she kind of called me out. So I was like, oh, she's right. I got to do it. Something. So anyway, um, yeah. So check out her her um, her channel. It came out. I mean, she her the embroidery together with the sublimation ink. Just it, it was just it was wow. I mean, it was a game changer, and it's definitely going to be something that I know. She, you know, she even said, "I'm adding this to my to my store," and I know she is going to really, really do well with that. Oh God, you hear Mello in the background? Okay, so here you go, Mello. You want to say hi? Okay, all right. So he was kind of like complaining a little bit. I don't know if you heard him in the background, but anyway, while she was doing that. I was messing around with designs to do brand new, oh Lord, brand new dinner napkins. And um, I don't like the way this design came out. Um, you know, I, I think it's really the colors that I chose that really didn't really give it that pop that I'm looking for. So this is definitely not going to make it to the shop. Um, but I wanted to talk to you guys about you know, I'm, I'm in a, a downtime right now because the, the shop, you know, I'm not getting too many sales. I'm getting the local sales, which is great. You know, um, you know, people, it, it's good and then it's bad. You know, it's it's good because, you know, I'm, I'm making a sale, right? You know, I'm selling, you know, that kind of stuff. But then my husband's kind of like, everybody's at the house, you know? <laughs> but, you know, the house is the store, I guess. Right, Melo? So anyway, Melo likes it because Melo gets to to meet and greet people. But my husband, he's okay with it, but he's kind of like, oh, you know, they always come at, at a time when he kind of like just wants to like relax. But eh, it's okay. He'll be fine. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so, I, you know, right now it's like a little downtime because I don't have too many Etsy uh, sales going on right now. I know they will start to pick up, especially during the Mother's Day. Um, time frame and everything. So one of the things that I did was I did play around with some of the baby blankets and I was thinking, let me show you this. I should have bought this over here before we started. Yes, Mello. Let me show you what I did. This is an idea for you guys. Um, I'm going to be sending one of these uh, to Puerto Rico because um, my cousin my my second cousin had a baby and they're going to be baptizing the baby this year and um this isn't the baby's name but this was me practicing with a new font that i got from um stitchtopia it's a beautiful 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 font um this font i got this from Stitch, stitchtopia and the font name is called um faith okay and i really really love it i do want to get on in brilliance but i want to show you something about this font because it has like three parts to the font right and i didn't i was having a little bit of trouble with it but some of the fonts are like that are you getting in my stuff mellow okay so i gotta watch him sometimes because he'll get into stuff stop it so um i want to show you so i'm gonna put um and brilliant on here and i want to show you something about the uh the fonts if i can't well as a matter of fact here we go all right well sometimes when you buy certain fonts right it, and especially the ones that have the little squiggly um designs in the front and in the back sometimes when you start to use them you know what let me show you guys because sometimes if I explain it, you guys aren't going to get it, you know, because <laughs> you're going to be like, what the hell is she talking about? So let me show this to you. OK. Um, all right. I'm in brilliance. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put in brilliance up in my side. Do you guys see it? Yeah, you do. OK. Now, what I'm going to do in here is let me start a new page and I'm going to add a font. Now I want to talk to you guys about this new font that I bought and it's um from sorry, it's from Stitchtopia and it's called Faith. I know I got a lot of fonts, guys. I'm telling you. Man. I I get font happy. Every time I see a font, I'm like, "Oh, that's cute. That's cute. That's cute. That's cute." And I add everything. Okay. So, here we go. Now, here's the one that I bought. It's called Stitchtopia Faith. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you 
Let me see. Here's my name. Now, this is one thing that I don't like with some fonts. See how this spacing you get right here? So I have to like actually go in here, click on each letter, and then I have to like drag it over. You know? And that kind of like that's time consuming. But it's all right. I mean, eh, it it, you know, I tell you know, I tell myself Jeanette patience. Okay, so this font comes with a you know how it's curvy here, okay, in the in the front. Sometimes you want the letter E to be a little curvy, right? So check this out. This font, I'm going to click here on the letters, and right here where it says my name, you know where I taught I typed Jeanette, instead of the E, I'm going to put a number 4. And then I'm going to hit enter. It didn't work. Maybe this isn't the font. Oh, it's not the font. Sorry, guys. It's number two. Let's go to font number two. Sorry. Okay, there you go. See, I put number four. Look at how the E came out. Now, I'm going to take this number four out. I'm going to put a regular E. And see how the E is now? Now, of course, you know, when I try to show you this, I'm going to have to move the, the, the letters over. Let me Let me pick a better name. My name is too long, and I'm going to be all over the place. Okay, Sam. Okay, the name Sam. All right, this is really cute. Now, see how the S comes out all squiggly and everything? Well, this is the regular M. Let's say that the letter M, I want it to be the fancy M, the one that has a little squiggly on that. Now, according to here, the M is an equal sign. So I'm going to hit delete, and I'm, instead of typing an M, I'm going to type an equal, and then I'm going to hit enter. Look at how the M showed up. Now the M has that little squirrely thing, okay? Now, I want to show you guys the directions that came with this. Um... Let me try to remove this from here, and I'm going to try to get that document. I should have had it ready for you guys. Well, okay. All right, let me tell you this way, okay? I'm going to try to hold it up because when you guys buy the font, you're going to get this, okay? When you buy the font and you download it, all right, um, you're going to get a piece of paper, and it's going to say something like this, right? bx key and examples yeah you guys can see that okay and then notice how here it says alternative alternative and then it says instead of typing an a you type this you know a b you type a one a c type a two and so on all this stuff and then this you know and then they give you an example right here like you know how i did sam and it says, um, instead of the H, sorry, the H, Sarah, put in a Sarah, instead of the H, put a seven. And the seven, if you look at it up here, the, the eight, the seven corresponds with the H. Okay? I hope I'm making sense. So what happens is sometimes when you are buying, um, and, and let me go in here. I'm going to go to Sitchtopia, and I want to show you what I'm talking about. Um, okay, hold on, guys. I'm going to share my screen so you guys can see. Stop screen. I'm going to share this because I want you guys to see. Where is it? Window. Is that it? Machines. All right. Mm. I don't think that's it. Oh, okay. Hold on one minute. This is really hard when you're doing all this stuff here. Um, there it is. Okay, got it. Share. All right. Am I sharing it? Yes. Okay. Now, I'm going to go down over here. All right. Now, when you go in here and you type faith, right, and you hit enter, Okay, you got this, you got this, this. We're looking for the fonts. There it is. 
This is the complete set with the fonts, right? I'm going to click on here. So I'm going to open this up. All right, cool. Now, when I'm talking about the three sets, look in here. This is the most important part to look at when you're buying fonts. And I'm going to tell you why. Because sometimes not every font looks good in every word, all right? Sometimes the, the letters would look good in some fonts and in some other fonts, it won't look good. Like for instance, when I did some makeup bags for a customer, um, two people had the letter I and the, the customer wanted a particular font. She wanted the, the yellow roses. I know that some folks wrote back and they were kind of like, the yellow I looks like a a J, it doesn't look like an I, right? Um, but it, it, that's how it looks. So usually what I'll do is I'll try to break up a font and then I'll try to get a font where the I looks a little nicer and then I'll mix it in with the rest of the word. In the, I mean, the rest of the letters with another font. So, you know, um, but see, these are all the, the, the fonts. But then if you click on the second one, I want you to pay attention right here, the first letter. This is the fancy first letter, and this is fate number two. Remember in the beginning, I tried to do it with fate number one. It doesn't have, uh, you know, this is fate number one, okay? This is fate number one, and all it has is these. And see how I highlight it? It says fate number one. That's all it has. If you go to fate font number two and fate font number three, that is where you're going to have these. See, it has the, the big font, the small font, and then if you want it at the end of the, the word, this is the fancy small font, okay? So see how it goes? The, 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 this is the capital letter, the small letter, and then the fancy small letter, okay? But the thing is, when you first just type it in, all you get is the capital letter and the small letter. If you want the fancy letter, that is when you have to do the instructions, okay, that I just pulled up and showed you, okay, because that will make sure that you get the fancy letter at the end, okay? I hope that that, that makes sense for you guys, and, and I hope that was a little clear, but because I know it can get kind of confusing. I'm going to tell you, it took a while for me to figure this out, okay? So I just wanted to show you guys that um, because, you know, sometimes you see, um, this embroidery and it looks so cute and then you see some people have like the fancy end right and then you're like oh i wanted that but when i typed it in i didn't get it well it's because you got it it's just that i you didn't download the instructions on how to correspond that last letter to what you need to type so that you can get that fancy squiggly line okay so this is like um it's pretty cool i really do like this font this font is really really cute um the only thing that i don't like like i said is when you saw that when i went to type it in i have to like reorganize everything so when i did my name it was like the the t and the e went off to the right and then you have to kind of like move it together and position all the letters in the right way when i use the the font maya i don't have that issue okay and i'll show you what i'm talking about because this is this is something that you know i'm kind of like oh uh, you know i kind of like the font maya for that like for instance here we go i'm gonna take this out well I'll highlight better uh, Maya is one of my favorite fonts in Stitchtopia, which is this one, okay? Um, and I'm probably saying the name wrong. It's M-A-Y-A-H, okay? And this one's Stitchtopia also. But I never really have to adjust the fonts, okay? Because look, when I click on it, it always goes exactly where I need it to be. See, so if I do my name, see, it's always like pretty, it, it's aligned pretty well. So you know, if I want to just, I can just um, highlight each one and just move it over just a tiny bit if I want it to be a little more connected. 
okay but it kind of it, it's really kind of like all together now i never liked the j on the the maya number one i always use uh maya number two because i kind of like that j like that you know but notice how it always comes together it's like it's it's like a much easier font to work with than when i looked at the faith because with faith when i click on faith um it kind of like scoops over and i noticed that it does that but hey i'm okay with that now, sarah is another one that's a cute one too yeah no nah, i don't like that jay okay jay didn't work for me okay but i think there's other sarahs because that's a sarah too i think i should maybe invest in sarah one and and stuff um yellow roses is the one that the other lady was buying let me see if i can show you guys this one this one's cute but it's kind of like in the small end but see how it all comes together i kind of like that it, it kind of comes together but the um the faith kind of like goes off somewhere i don't know but so i gotta fix it but that's all right i mean you know it is a beautiful font you know so i mean it is gorgeous so if you gotta do a little extra work sometimes then that's okay you know but um yeah but let me also uh while we're here in brilliance i do want to show you guys some stuff that i've been working on well see this is the napkin the dinner napkin that i had been working on here and i'm gonna click on here so you guys can see it um this let me tell you, this dinner napkin was a napkin that a uh, customer had reached out and they wanted customized. Um, but they were um, kind of problematic. So I was just kind of like, mm, this isn't going to work. So I kind of like, <laughs> you know how I say sometimes not every sale is a good sale. So anyway, um, I kind of said, no, I don't think this is going to work. But as you can see um, on the sample that I did, I feel like the the letter is too small, needs to be bigger, which I, I've just made it a little bigger right now and um, scooted it over. This is uh, something too that I love. A lot of people ask me about this right here that I'm circling right here. This is called the Density Repair Kit Module on um, in Brilliance. And what I like about this module is you can highlight a design right and then look where i'm moving my cursor and i hope you can see it um right here it says stitches are fourteen thousand seventy two. so when i highlight the design i hit this vacuum cleaner there you go and it just took away one stitch but let me see sometimes you can have um a design that has a lot of overlapping stitches right so what happens is it cleans it up so that you have less stitches to have to do and um it kind of saves you on time and it does save you on um on thread and stuff here's another design i don't think this is going to be too much cleanup this is 56 36 let me put the vacuum on it yeah okay it went down to 5607 which isn't a lot i mean it's just what just saved me what like 30 32 stitches or something like that you know that's not bad but you know it's not over one but if you have something that has a lot like uh here let's try it. let's look at my designs over here and see if i can pick something so i can really show you where it would really make a difference um let me see. I'm going to go and I'm going to grab a design um, so I can show you guys. Let me see. Purchased. Uh, hold on. Let me try to show you design. Okay, here's a design that I purchased. And I've used this on a lot of kitchen towels. And, um, oh, can you guys see? Yeah, you guys can see. As you can see, um, this is a design that i got from embroiderydesigns.com um it's an okay design i mean it stitches out great the thing that i'm not crazy about this design is if you can see um i've already cleaned it up i have a a, a file already done where i cleaned all this up as you can see right here this has a lot of jump stitches right so there's a lot of modifications that you need to make 
to this design. Now, this is the design as is coming from them, all right? And if you look at the bottom where it has right here the number of stitches, it's 9920. Uh, I'm gonna highlight this whole thing and I'm gonna run the vacuum cleaner and I'm gonna see if it removes anything. So let's see what happens. Yep, it removed a lot. Now, if you see, it's 9765. So that means over 200 stitches. Some stitches were overlapped, not really necessary stitches. So it doesn't, it doesn't diminish the integrity of the design. What it does is it's eliminating stitches that really aren't necessary in order for you to embroider this design. So um, I really loved this feature. This is one of my favorite features in, in, in Embrilliance. Um, it's, it, of course, it's a module you have to purchase separate, but it's called a density density repair kit and it removes um the stitches and stuff and um it to me it was so worth it because i'm because it saves you so much let me um see if i can get another design just so that you can guys can see you know we'll play with this for a little bit and see um i'm gonna look for another design and see um where no, I want to try to get one with a lot of details, something where, well, I thought I had like a wine, a wine design or something. Um, okay. You know, when you're looking for stuff, you can never find it. You can never find it. All right, let, let's do this one. Here we go. I got a Puerto Rican flag. Let's do the Puerto Rican flag. Let's see. All right, so here we go. I got the Puerto Rican flag up there. Um, this design in itself, 10,594 stitches, okay, the way it is. I'm going to highlight it because that's all you do is just click on it. Um, is my mouse working? No, my mouse is not working. There it is. Okay, now I'm going to hit the vacuum again. I kind of love doing this because it's kind of fun just to see how many stitches it could get. So we're at, we're at 10,594. I'm going to hit the vacuum. Eh, that's It was a pretty good design. It just took away about 200 stitches. So that's pretty good. That means that the digitizer really did a pretty good job in avoiding overlapping stitches and all that kind of stuff and everything. So anyway, but anyway, I just wanted to show you, this is a, uh, something that I really, really, truly like about in Brillis. It's one of my favorite um, new things that I've done. Um, the other thing that I've recently purchased, I still have to play with it some more, is, um, and let me uh, do a new page. I've looked into the patches, and I believe you click on here. Let me see. Wait. I'm going through a blank right now. I don't know why. Okay. Where is it? Somebody help me here. Help me, help me, help me, help me. Oh, I, anyway, I think it's here. Here it is. I think it's library. There you go. Ugh, this, I'm having a moment. Okay, all right. In brilliance, mer uh, merribly, whatever. I, I'm terrible with names. Anyway, this is a new thing they came out with, and it's to help with patches because I really want to learn patches. So I bought this, and one of the things that I love is, look, it has all the borders for the patches. I really, really, really like this. I think this is pretty neat. Don't you think that's neat, Mello? Okay, so do that. they even have the shields for, for the cops and all that kind of stuff. Now, the other thing, too, that I kind of like about this as well is that, um, let me just pick one. I don't no expert in this. I'm just playing around with it as I'm talking to you guys. Um, they this comes with fonts as well. Um, and let me show you right here. It's like they're they all start with the uh, M. There you go, Merly. Okay, so when you get the the set with the shields for the patches, you get all these um, small fonts with it as well, which I kind of love because. It's really hard to find really good small fonts. A lot of times when you're buying fonts, they're usually about the smallest a half an inch or maybe you could get a 0.75. 
Um, but some a lot of times the, the the fonts are in the sizes of one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch, right? They don't really come in small. You have to specifically look for small fonts, right, Melo? Yeah. So anyway, but what I like is when I went to Enrilance and I got this um this module with the patches that I want to learn how to use. Um, I noticed it came with all these small little fonts, and I really like it because these are fonts that you could use inside the patches. So it's like, you know, um, a lot of them, some of them, they even call them police. So I guess if you want to make police patches and stuff, um, but I think this is like really cool for, um, for you know, for sports or whatever, you know. I mean, I thought this was pretty, pretty cool. And I know that these also have little functions. Um, that you can do so that you know it has all these available characters it when and the how i got this was i clicked on the information tab okay that comes with the the new fonts for the patches all right if you click on this i okay this i will tell you these are the available characters in this font in the the abc and if you see it has all the symbols and all that kind of stuff now let's go over to because now i'm curious about like um this okay let's say you have these um regular fonts that you buy from stitchtopia i still have that eye there when i click on that eye it also gives me the information about other fonts as well okay now i noticed that i started i didn't really pay attention to that eye symbol until um I got the patches and I was watching like Lisa Shaw and she was um, telling people to go to that I to get information about the fonts. That's when I started learning about it. And I was like, oh, I didn't even know that was there. Right. So I noticed that and I started going through all my fonts. And then I noticed that when you hit the I, I get all this information and stuff. And, you know, I wonder if this information is true. Let me see. Because it says I could do explanation point. Yep, it is true. Yeah, I do have an explanation. And some of these fonts, and this is the other thing too. Sometimes when you buy fonts, right? Fonts don't come, Some not all of them come with the symbols, okay? Some of them just come with the letters. They just come with the capital letter and the small letter. They all don't come with the symbols. So um, this is pretty cool because it looks like this font from Sistopia has the symbols and stuff, which is, pretty cool because sometimes you do need them you know but that is pretty neat and um let me see if i can pick another font over here well this is another font and then if i hit information um yep it has all the numbers and it has the uppercase the lowercase and it has some symbols as well so that is pretty pretty cool i kind of like that um yeah so that's pretty cool so let me show you something else that I was trying to do. This is another dinner napkin that I am trying to make. Now, for those of you guys that want to do dinner napkins, I'm telling you, these are so simple to do. What, what you want to do is these things right here are called frames, all right? So if you do a search for embroidery frames on Etsy or if... um or if you go to any embroidery website, right, where they have different designs and everything, look for frames. Frames are going to be where you get the circles, where you get, you know, the different shapes and everything. And then you can, they have some really beautiful, beautiful frames out there. Some, you know, this was one that I had just picked up. I really like that because, I mean, I'm like, oh, spring, you know, spring is coming up and stuff. And sometimes people like to do picnics outside and everything. So I figured this would be a cute, um, you know, and it doesn't come with the letter. Okay. This was something that I added. All right. This is just, this is me. I'll, I'll just take this out for now. Okay. So this is what you get. You just get the frame. Okay. So um i really liked it and then the thing is too is you know you can also change colors like let's say you don't like this you want the flowers to be red if you click on here you'll see the different steps of all the different um colors and designs and stuff like right here this is 85 pink okay so let's say i don't like that color and i want to change it to i don't know red i'm going to click red and then i just hit okay 
See how they change red? So it's very easy to do. And then this is the big flower right here. I want to make that one red too. So let me just, there you go. So I can make all that red. And let's say I don't like that light green. Um, I want to make a, a darker green, like an emerald green. I can go here and I can click on an emerald green. Let's see, where's the emerald green? There you go. And then hit OK. And look how it changes out. And then um, right here, these things are yellow. Well, let's say I want to change them to white, okay? Because maybe I want to do like a little Christmassy screen thing, okay? This is yellow. Also, I'm going to change this one to white. You know, there go. You, this could be a Christmas thing too, you know? And then right here, then I have a, I want to put a font. Right, so I have a Stitchtopia Mary font, right? And let me do a one and a half. And then let's say I wanna put the letter M, there you go. And then I could just take this and I'll just move it up a little bit. There you go, that's cute, that's cute. I mean, and you could put this, this would look cute on a black, I, I would say a black, dinner napkin so that all the colors can pop you know so this would this would look cute for christmas if you oh sorry if you want to do something for christmas so see how you can change up stuff i mean you can take get things and this is something that i bought off of etsy okay i did um embroidery um frames and they have so many different ones beautiful beautiful ones you know so this is really, really cute. Let me see, this was another, okay, this was one that that um, I had designed. Um, yeah, I'm not feeling this one. I'm gonna have to play around with this a little bit because I really don't want this to go to waste, even though I kind of like that M, that M is cute too. I wonder if the M would look better on the other one that I just did right here. This would probably look cute in that M too, let me see. Um, that's the Faith, and let me see, two inches. Oh, nope, not that one. That's not going to work. That's for sure. Okay, maybe one and a half. Yeah, that, that, mm. yeah, I would just have to make it just a little smaller. Nah, I don't like it. It's too much. It's, it's too much. It doesn't even really, yeah, I don't think this will work for this. I think I should have left it alone. But anyway, <laughs> sometimes, you know, it's like, eh, you know, well, let me, um, Go through and see if you guys have questions of all the stuff that I've talked about so far. Um, let me see if I hit any questions over here. Hey, Miss Woods, how you doing? Hey, Amanda. Um, okay. Hey, Crafty Gemini. Hey, Leslie. Let's see. Hey, Sassy. How you doing? Hey, Miss Parker. Hey, Miss Hicks. Hey, Miss Porter. Hey, Nana. How you doing? Hey, Miss Max. Um, hey, Iris. Okay, I see everybody say hi. Hey, Eartha. Hey, hey, Meek. How you doing? Jeanette, I got motivated also. Imagine combining sublimation with embroidery. Awesome. I know. I'm telling you, you guys got to watch that video from Lilia. She, she kind of cracked me up. I was laughing because when she was done with the whole thing, she was like, Flora, she was like, this is nice. This is nice. This is nice. So you just got to watch it because, I mean, I loved her enthusiasm. She got all excited and everything. I got a little jealous. I was like, I want to do that. You know? <laughs> but then when she called me out with my salt grass printer, I was like, ooh, I better get to work because she called me out. It's true. I bought my printer and I'm not using it. That's not good. Um, what's the name of her channel? It's called In, Bro In Bro Print Now. Let me... um. Let me type. Why am I doing that? And bro. And um, why you tell me if I did it wrong? And bro, print now. I think that's that's it. I think I typed it. I may have typed it wrong and stuff like that. But I mean, it was just beautiful. It was just beautiful. Hey, D. Ella. Hey, Miss Dandridge. How you doing? Um. Hey, Crafty Patty. <laughs> 
That's beautiful. Thank you. Jeanette, I love you. You got me back on my machine. Hey, Amanda, you're a great teacher. I bought in brilliant stuff. Thank you very much. Oh, you are so, so welcome. Don't be afraid to use it. But then again, I mean, look at what I say. Don't be afraid to use it and stuff. My sublimation printer is just like staring at me like, hello, you know. But like I said, it's just so unforgiving. And, you know, I was trying to use beer bunks, right? Because, um, you know, where I live, there's a lot of military folks around here, right? So I was thinking, oh, I could get, I could do the beer mugs and then I can put, you know, Air Force, Marines, Navy, you know, do the military, put the people's ranks on them because those are really big because I know my, my husband, when he was stationed in Germany, um, I guess in Germany, they're big on the beer thing. So he has a special, uh, like beer mug and it had like the Air Force, um, symbol i guess of where he was stationed at so i did a, a mug for my neighbor and i'm gonna tell you something it took me about like three mugs before i got it right and those mugs were not cheap they were like 11 bucks each but i wanted to do it for him because he served in the air force and there were like some special units and i wanted to do something special for him because really nice guy so I finally got the, the mug for him and I got it done and he, he loved it so much. And then the, um, I guess some um, of his Air Force buddies from Florida found out about the mug. They wanted me to do it. But the thing is, I couldn't do it because it's, it's just I had to do it in the oven. I, it, you know, and that's the thing with the with the I didn't have the press for those beer mugs. I had it for coffee mugs. So sublimation. Um, sometimes you, you're going to see some videos where people buy like a, a big toaster oven and you have to make sure that the oven is at a certain degree level and you have to leave it in there for a certain amount of time and you have to get shrink wrap and everything. It's a process. It really, really is. And I made so many mistakes where the temperature wasn't right or the, um, the shrink wrap wasn't tight enough. And the paper moved, and when the paper moved, you get something called shadow uh, shadowing. And um, and you can hear him crying. Stop it! Oh, he messed up my stuff. Okay, all right. So anyway, <laughs> okay, Mello made a mess. So anyway, um, he uh, he tore up one of his toys. So it, I had shadow shadowing, and um, and it sometimes I didn't leave the the item in the oven long enough temperature so what ended up happening was the ink didn't really go through there were some places where the ink was rich and then you would look at the other spots of the design and it looked like it was faded so i just got really frustrated because i was kind of like look i mean i would look at the garbage can and i would see all these like mugs that there was nothing wrong with these mugs until i got a hold of them and tried to put sublimation on them so i got frustrated i said you know what because what what goes to my mind was Okay, $11 mug, $11 mug, $11 mug. And you see it in the garbage and you're like, oh, so, but she made a very good point. She came out, um, she showed like a bunch of hats, a bunch of equipment that she bought. And she was like, this is my research and development. So, you know, and she's right. You know, you, you do have to sometimes just buckle down and, and sometimes you got to spend the money on, on, on items for you to practice. You know, um, with embroidery, it's a little different, right? Because when we buy something and we're embroidering like this, um, for me, I look at it like this. This is a dinner napkin, right? And it has four corners, right? So what I usually do is I'll take one dinner napkin and I'll do a design here. Then I'll do a design on one corner, a design on another corner, a design on another corner. So it doesn't feel like a wasted a wasted dinner napkin because you know if you're if you want to sell dinner napkins and you want to make samples to show your customers take advantage of all the corners make a different design on each of them and then you can position them so that you can take the picture where you only show that particular design and then you go ahead and then you position it to the other design and stuff and you can take the dinner napkins with you and it's like four samples on one napkin. So I don't feel like I wasted that much. However, though, when I was doing the sublimation, you know, when you mess up a, a cup, 
you you messed up the cup. The cup has something to do with the cup, but to throw it out. So I, it, like I said, it's it's so unforgiving. But I'm gonna have to suck it up and just do it. You know, I'm gonna have to like just spend spend the money on some blanks and practice until I get it right. And like she said, find the right formula that works for you. So that way, once you have the formula down packed, then I could go ahead and I could probably add it to my shop. And then hopefully within time, I make all that money back. We'll see. <laughs> and sublimation is, is not cheap. Let me tell you something. That's another thing too. We talk about embroidery not being cheap. Um, you know, oh, let me take this out so that you can see me. You, you know, we talk about embroidery not being cheap. Well, sublimation, um, I have the sawgrass, okay? And that ink is is very, very expensive. To replace the ink on that machine is like 300 bucks, okay? I have not been able to find it really cheap anywhere, okay? And this is the other thing too. Sometimes you don't want to go and say, oh, this is a no, no brand uh, ink. Let me let me try this because you're talking about very expensive printer, and if you mess up that 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 printer, then it's like you're you're sol, you're you're done. Okay, so you know I'm like, Ugh. I, and I'm gonna be honest, I kind of wish I waited longer. Like she said, she waited a, a long time before she made the decision to to buy the sublimation printer that she she chose. Um, I kind of wish that I did the same thing. Um, I did it because I had a, a coupon, so I only paid half price for my my sawgrass because I had all these reward points, so I was able to use it. But um, if I had to do it all over again, would I have gotten the sawgrass? Um, I don't know if I would have gotten it. Um, I probably would have looked at other other types out there because there are just so many other things out there. Okay. And stuff. So anyway, um, another thing I wanted to tell you guys, you know how I told you you can do designs on all four corners on, on a on a uh, on a napkin. You could do the same thing if you are doing like a baby quilt. Okay, remember um, this is this is only one corner of the quilt. You know, there's four corners, right? So I would you know um, go to the next corner. This is empty, okay? So, you know, you can do, hey, this is the boy version. And then here you can put a girl's name and in pink or whatever. And then you can say, this is what the girl's version look like. Do the same thing with birth templates, okay? If you're doing uh, baby blankets with birth templates and stuff, do a boy on one side, do the girl on the other side. So that way, if people want to come and take a look at a sample of your work, then all you got to do is just pull out the, the blanket and stuff. That is one of the things that I kind of do like about selling locally also versus selling online. Sometimes when you're you're selling things online, people look at your items, but you they really depend on the photography and how well you take a picture of it, right? But when you are selling locally, and I have some you know customers that sometimes when they order these blankets from me, okay, they, I like for them to come. And what I'll do is I'll take my laptop and I can show them the different fonts and how it's going to look, all right? And then it's it's like, it kind of takes away a little bit from the mystery. The customer kind of has a, a real better idea of what they're gonna get, okay? Which is why like, I like the threads, having the threads here. And even now that I got the, um, these these uh color cards okay i love these too because when they when they're trying to pick a color okay um i didn't know that these color cards actually these are not just pictures these are not pictures okay these are the actual thread okay so they are going to know exactly how the thread's going to look all right. And what I like, too, is when they come and they want to look at the item and they say, hey, can I take a look at the blanket? Yes, I have the blankets here. They can touch it. They can feel it. They can actually look at the details of the of the cross. They can see how, you know, see how there's detail on here. See how you can tell the outline and stuff. Sometimes that does not come out 
when you're taking pictures. You know, if you have an Etsy shop and stuff like that, and you're you're trying to take the pictures, sometimes that level of detail doesn't really come across in the picture unless you really zoom in and focus and stuff like that. But if you have someone that comes over and, and you're meeting with them face to face, they get to actually touch it. They see the quality of the item that they're getting, and they can also feel the the embroidery and stuff like that. So I just feel like they get a better idea of what they're they're getting, and and also you know you I I, I kind of like having that customer relationship. I, honestly, that's just me. I, I don't know if it's because I'm I'm a you know I am a people person. You know I don't have a problem, you know spending time with a customer showing them different fonts, showing them different colors, and trying to um, work with them. Honestly, though, um, I feel that when you do that, you you build a really good relationship with that person, a really good business relationship. And what ends up happening is a lot of times they will be, you know, they'll they'll continue to work with you because they know that you're patient. They know that you're really concerned about what they want and and you want you don't mind going that extra mile to give them what what it is that they they need. So I feel that that's really important and stuff so and and I do have a lot of repeat customers because of that. Like um you know the lady that does the dog shows and stuff, um she's always drawing stuff and everything and she she likes working with me for the simple fact that you know, um, me and her will go back and forth on a design on different colors and stuff like that. And, you know, and she sometimes even when she has a design, I'll be like, oh, I don't know how the digitized is going to do that. She's OK with with working and stuff like that. I feel like if you're honest and you're up front and, and you you work with your customers, you you really do build a good relationship. And the next thing you know, you, you could end up having a customer for life. I even have another lady that I do all her vinyl shirts. Um, she, you know, she always like, sometimes she'll see something and she'll be like, Hey, Jeanette, could you duplicate something like this? Or she'll have an idea and she'll say, Hey, I want a shirt to say something. And, you know, and I'll show her the difference because she likes the vinyl shirts. Um, she, I've also done some embroidery work for her as well, but, um, you know, it's like, she'll come up with stuff and, and, you know, like last Christmas, I, I embroidered some ties for her. And I think I did a, a video when I embroidered the ties, she wanted to give her bosses some ties and she wanted their names embroidered on the tie. And, um, you know, I, I messed around with certain fonts and all that kind of stuff and everything. So you would be surprised, you know, it goes a long, long way when you take the time to actually work with people and stuff. Now, I'm not saying be a doormat either, okay? <laughs> Let me put that out there, right? Um, and don't think that I haven't had my moments where I have to tell people this isn't going to work out because, because there have been times, okay? Um, you know, like I said, it's it's all about being fair, and I am a true believer of that, okay? I have no problem you know, spending time with people, working with them and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, my prices are fair. I don't negotiate the prices. This is what they are. Um, you know, because my thing is I'm not out there to rob you, but at the same time, I'm not here for you to rob me. Okay. So, you know, um, I'm, you know, when people get snippy and they go, well, I'll just go somewhere else. I'm like, go somewhere else. It's, it's, it's okay. I'm fine with, that. <laughs> you know, I mean, Good luck, you know, but um, and and the thing is, too, is uh, if I see someone's kind of like snippy or impatient, kind of like the the lady with the, you know, the person that was trying to get these customized napkins, um, you know, I was very clear and certain in what can be done and what couldn't be done. And then when she saw it, um, she wanted some modifications, which I was fine with. And that's OK. But it got to the point where the modifications were, okay, now we started to where we were in the beginning. So I kind of told her, okay, we're not doing this because it's taking up too much of my time. And I got other people that know what they want. So I was just like, uh-uh. So it, you know, and for the price that I was giving her these napkins for, I just didn't think that there was much of a value. And sometimes you got to watch it too, because some people, no matter how hard you work, and how much you try to help them, 
um, you know, they they could bash you, you know, um, because they're they're quickly they'll they're very quick to forget um everything you did to try to help. Um, they just didn't get what they wanted, so they get mad. So, you know, I kind of like, you know, I'm pretty good at detecting right away when it's it's not a good thing for me. And I have no problem saying, you know, this isn't going to work out. And, and sometimes you don't even have to tell them. You, you just tell them you're too busy. That's all. Just tell them, I'm, I'm really sorry. I, you know, I think you're going to have to go somewhere else because right now I can't take on that kind of work. That's it. What are they going to tell you? You know, so that's just how, you know, how I do it, you know. And stuff. So um, let me see. I'm still going down here. Hey, Miss Hudson, um, your design sense is awesome. Combination is so regal. Love it. Oh, uh, thank you. My husband told me to go ahead and get in brilliant sense. So I'm my. So I would like to buy where you get credit. Does this make sense? Yeah, I do get credit. Um, my I do have affiliated links and stuff. Um, you know, so yes, uh, Nana, I, I always have the affiliated links on the description of all my, my videos and stuff, but I do get, um, it's like a small, small commission. It's not much, but hey, it's something, right? You know, so yeah, but you know, if you, I, I would appreciate if you would use my link. That would be awesome and stuff. Hey, Seven Little Birds, how are you? Hey, Diamond Boutique. I like that name, Diamond Boutique. That's pretty cool and stuff. Um, does that work with both fonts? Hey, Iris. Okay. I, I'm going to assume because I went off rambling, you know, <laughs> this, you mean the, the, the key and examples. Okay. I, Iris, when you, when you look at Stitchtopia and you're buying the fonts, you'll know if you're going to have a three letter character or two, it'll show you in the pictures, just like I showed you. Okay. If you, if you look at the example um, when you when you look at the font and then you look at the pictures and you just see the capital and the small letter, then that means that there's no special ending. Um, a lot of times these are for um, the script because they, you know, some people like to have that fancy curve in the first letter and the last letter. And so and sometimes they look cute. Now, sometimes I think they go a little over fancy. Right. So if they if it looks kind of over fancy, I won't use the last letter with that special curve or, you know, you could also do it. Well, no, no, you can't do it the other way. Cause the, I was going to tell you don't, you know, there's no special curve on the first letter. But there is, you, you cannot get away from that. You will always end up using that first letter. It's the, uh, you have the choice of the regular size, small letter or the curvy uh, size, small letter if I made sense. Okay. It's always the last letter where you have that choice, whether you want it to be regular or you want it to be with that special design that they put at the end of that letter and stuff. But that is where you, you have that. Is there something in brilliance to about Griff's well, I don't know what that means. Galef in fonts too. Um, I don't know what that means, Tracy. Um, let me see. What's that like character mapping that you us before? Okay, the character mapping is what comes with um the font when you buy it from Stitchtopia. Okay, and that's because it has like three. Um, you know, it, it has three letters instead of two. Okay. Um, see, that's beautiful. Hey, Lacey, how are you? Maya is my go-to font. Yeah, Miss Woods, I'm telling you, it's mine too. <laughs> it is because you can't go wrong with that. It always comes out clean, crisp. It is my go-to font too. It really is. Now, I am. I I like this new Faith font. I think it's really cute. Very very fancy. But like you, like you guys saw when I type it, it's like it's a little off sometimes. So and I have to drag each of them. So I don't know. I don't have the val the vacuum on my imbrillance. Hey Marceline. Okay, the vacuum for the um imbrillance. Okay, that's a, another module that you have to buy. And let me let me show you guys the modules so that we can um so that I can show you guys what what I mean by all this. Okay. Let's go over to Imbrillance, and I'm going to show you um, what all this stuff means. Because 
I have gotten, um, uh oh. Okay, I thought, oof, man, I thought I lost you guys. Okay, because I have gotten a lot of, of people that ask about this because it can get confusing. Okay, it can get confusing. So I want to make sure that I show you exactly what this is all about. Okay, um, so who was the one that asked? Oh, Marlene, Marlene. Okay, all right, Marlene. All right, now. Think of in brilliance. In brilliance has different types of modules of the software that you can buy. All right. Usually, when you are when you want to go to in brilliance, the first thing that you buy is right here. Look under products right here. It says essentials. Essentials is usually the basic one. Okay. Now, um, also there is a free version of it too. Where is that free version? Where is it? 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 There it is. Click on free and utilities. Okay. So if you guys don't have a brilliance yet, right? Check this out. It's it's called Express. Okay. Express fonts and designs. I recommend you guys download it. Play with it. Okay. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. And you would be able to use fonts and all that kind of stuff. You can do some stuff, but it's pretty limited. Okay. So, but just something that I want to put out there, because sometimes a lot of people don't know. They just think, oh, I have to just go and buy um, buy the software. Try the free stuff first and see if you like it, okay? And if you like it, then do the investment and stuff. Because remember, this, is, this costs money, all right? So what's important is that you get what you are comfortable with, all right? I use Embrillance because I'm a Mac person. I love Apple. So um, this is the only embroidery software that I found that work with it. However, though, I do like it too because I, I, there is so much support out there. Um, I watched Lisa Shaw. She's really good at teaching how to do things and stuff. And you, there's a lot of YouTube videos on how to use um, a, a, in brilliance and all that kind of stuff. So it's just, you know, I, I like it, you know. So anyway, but you would start off like let's say uh, you you just want to get it, right. Um, you you tried the the free express, you like it. The first one that you would start is with the essentials. Okay, now the essentials is like the first module. All right, and um, right here, what it does, it it tells you right here what you can do. All right, it lets you resize and merge designs. Okay. Uh, recalculate stitches. All right. Now, when it, when it's saying recalculating stitches, it's not what I showed you. It's not the vacuum. Okay. What they mean by recalculating stitches is when you make the design smaller, you don't need that, all those extra stitches, right? So it's going to remove the extra stitches as you make the design smaller. However, though, if you have some unnecessary stitches that are kind of in the design that's going to stay there okay all it is is just making the design smaller all right um you it also does remove overlapping stitches i've had kind of issues with that i haven't had too much luck with it removing the overlapping stitches which is the reason why i got the density repair kit but i don't know um colorizing it Printing templates, okay? And in some of the videos that I have done, I showed you guys where I create the design and then you do file print and it'll actually print the template of your design so that way you can cut it out and you can put it right where you want it. And that's really good, especially if you have, um, you're, you're hooping something and you want a particular design to be in a certain place, just pin it there. And then when you put it under your single needle machine or even your multi needle machine, you can make sure that it's aligned exactly how you want it, okay? And you can add the lettering, okay? So this, and, and it runs on the Mac and it runs on the web. So this is the in Brilliance um, Essentials. This will be the first one, okay? Now, if you guys want to do digitizing, all right, this is what you would get, which is the Stitch Artist, all right? Stitch Artist has three levels, okay? So um, every level gives you a little bit of capability, okay? And then as you as you start adding more, okay, you get more capability. Read here and it'll tell you exactly what it is that you can do, okay? Now, the Merly patches, 
that's what I just recently got and I have to learn it, okay? Because I am just play with it very, very little. But as you can see, it comes with all the different fonts in here and these are all the small fonts and it's supposed to be all for patches. And as you can see, you're supposed to be able to do all these type of outlines of, of for patches and everything. Um, so I, I want to learn patches, okay? Because I, I haven't done patches yet. It's something that I really want to because I heard that there's a really good market for patches and stuff, especially when people have shirts that they have something, they just want to cover it up or or they have a hole in pants or shirt or something like that, even though sometimes holes in pants are rent, you know, <laughs> you know, so it's like, um, but, you know, patches are pretty, pretty um, big. A lot of people like to put them on book bags, bags and all that kind of stuff. So I, I want to learn how to do that. And I see, oh, it's on sale now. OK. All right. So anyway. Um, this is what, where you want the vacuum. Okay. This is where I got the vacuum. This is called a density repair kit. Okay. And what it does is it, see, it says it cleans up poorly digitized, overly dense and overly light embroidery designs. Okay. Using smart tools and it'll, it'll pre-digitize stitch file elements. Okay. So in other words, it's going to alter it so that way you're when you're stitching it out, it's not like really dense. OK, now dense means when you have a design and it's like stitches on top of stitches on top of stitches. And it's it kind of like it makes the, the design really like hard kind of, you know, like it's really dense. Um, you know, the, the more stitches you have, the denser it's going to be. And then sometimes also you'll get like puckering if you are embroidering something like that on a very light fabric, like um like what I have on. This is very, very, very thin. Um, I would have to put a lot of stabilizer on this. I'll probably have to double up on the stabilizer and probably use uh, no show mesh just so that I could, um you know, keep the, the shirt intact. And so, so this is um, this is where I got the vacuum from. Okay, this is what I got the vacuum from and stuff. And then they also have Alpha Tricks. I don't have that. I think that's fonts, if I remember correctly. I'm gonna click on that to see. I think it's something else. I don't know. Um, making alphabet designs as easy as regular fonts. Looks pretty. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Um. Oh, rename even purchased. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I I never I never got this, so I don't know. They have a fonts and collections. I never got that either. The thumbnailer I got, and um, I don't really use it that much because now now with the Mac you can actually see the file, the picture of the file and stuff. But yeah, I got um almost everything except I didn't get the alpha or the fonts, and um. Yeah, I don't I don't have the the quilt thing. So, you know, I hope that that helps a little bit. Um, let me go back to the stream yard here. Um, and I hope I hope that helped you, uh, Marlene and stuff. But um that that's where I got that. Okay, that's where you get the vacuum. And I and I've got a bit, I like the vacuum because that actually, as you as you guys saw when I was playing around with it, a design can have that and and it's if you saw some of my old videos too you guys would would have noticed that there were a couple of times when i had bought a design and i had it all done and everything because and a lot of times i merge designs okay sometimes i i buy a design that i think is really cute and then i'll, I'll get another design and i'll put one on top of the other and you know that makes it dense okay and then what what will happen is when I run that vacuum, it actually cleans it up for me. So it makes it a lot nicer and stuff like that. So I hope that that helps a little bit. Um, you know, so yeah. So hopefully that that cleared it up for you. Um, Mala is yep. Everybody loves that font. I'm telling you that font is like a. What is the name of Liliana's site? Oh, oh man. Okay. I know it's in. Let me, I'm gonna let me look at my um MacBook and I'm going to tell you guys. I mean, you guys got to see what she did. I mean, it was it was just phenomenal. You know, I I and I have to admit, I like watching her because 
See, I don't get, I don't have anybody to talk Spanish with, okay? My husband's not, not Puerto Rican. Um, my my son doesn't want to speak Spanish. Um, of course, Mel, does, Mel just talks doggish, you know? So I don't have anyone to speak Spanish with. So um, in Blueprint now, let's see. There it is. Okay, I'm going to, uh, this is her channel. Um, e. And I did do I did do it wrong. There it is. I just put it in there. Okay, that's her channel in Bro Print now. And um, she just did the video today. It was like so cool and stuff. I mean, it was it was awesome. I mean, it, I was just like, that's nice. <laughs> I was like, I want to do that and stuff. You know, I even thought to myself, I need to make a trip to Minnesota. I mean, that would be cool. I mean, I would love to fly out there and like spend the weekend with her in her shop and, and watch her. I mean, oh my God, if she ever told me I could do that, I'd get on a plane. I would be like, I'm on my way. <laughs> I mean, that lady is awesome. Awesome. I love it. Um, let me see. Watching you need to buy the module for that. Yep. Mm -hmm. Do you have stitch artists for, do you have to have, you know what, Kelly? I think you do. I think you do. I, I Thanks for asking. I, I believe you do. I think you have to have, I think stitch artists three. I'm not sure. Hold on. Let me see real quick. Um, I think you do. Let me see. Uh, specs. Mm. She don't. Yeah. Make sure you find out before. You, oh, okay. Native. All included fonts and designs are scalable. Users of Stitch Artist Three will be able to convert the fonts and designs to edible okay i would reach out to them to make sure that you need that see i do have stitch artist three because i was trying to play around with some digitizing with my husband so we we got the the stitch artist three and stuff i'm really not into the digitizing thing I, it's not my thing i I like to play with my machine. I like to play with my thread. I like to play with the needles and my machine and all that kind of stuff. I'm more of a machinist. I am not much of a digitizer at all. Um, I just want to learn enough so I can fix certain things and stuff like that. I'm good with that. And, and I think I'm okay with that. But um, yeah, I think you might need to get uh, the, the Stitch Artist uh, 3 for, for the patches. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, let me see. Do you have a video on how to put purchase fonts in and browse? Yes, I do, Portia. Um, I do have a video and um it's called how to install BX files, okay, into in brilliance. It's a drag and drop. It's so easy to do. When you watch the video, Portia, you're gonna be like, Oh, that's it. Uh, you, you're gonna be amazed at how quick, how how easy it is. It's just literally a drag and drop, okay? Open up the zip file. Get the BX file, hold on to it, and just drag it to the screen that you have in Brilliance, and you're going to get a pop-up box, and it's going to say that the file is has been installed. If you don't see it right away, then what you do is just shut down in Brilliance and restart it, and you're going to see it as part of your list, okay? But I do have a video on that. If you can't find it, let me know on our Facebook group, and then I'll, I'll put the link out there so that way you can get it, okay? Um... No, the module is not named um, Patches. It's called Mer Merly. Merly is M-E-R-R-O-W-L-Y. That's what it's called, okay? Hey, fabulous. How are you? Um, you could also put it on a top. Yes. Yeah, you are right. I. You know what? That, you know, that, thank you, Iris. That, you know what? This would look nice on a towel. You are correct. I could see this on a on a bathroom towel. And you know what? I bet you this could be a set. This could be a set and you could give this as a wedding gift to a, a, a couple that's getting married 
or or a friend that just bought a house or something like that home yeah you know what i'm gonna i guess i'll be going to walmart tomorrow i'll be going to walmart and buying some towels and that would probably look cute in my bathroom so <laughs> iris thanks for the idea hey norma diaz how you doing my first slide with you welcome welcome don't let it be the last though okay stay on. <laughs> thank you thanks for joining me tonight hey debbie how you doing um let's see got on late always love to watch when i'm doing dishes even after the fact love mellow hey bro creative learning how you doing thanks for watching what's up um yeah that right there i had um posted her name wrong i did i did the 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 thing right the second time you know i bought thumb lighter and i don't know how to use it another thing to learn okay the you know what's funny with the thumb nailer um the, what the thumbnail is supposed to do, it's supposed to allow you to see the picture of that embroidery file without having to double click on it and open it to see what it is, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you, that's a pain because sometimes what happens is when you buy these embroidery files, they have these funky names, okay? And, and it makes sense to the digitizer and the seller because that's how they keep track of their inventory and that's the naming convention that they use for all their designs. But for us as the buyer, it kind of like sucks because B4999 whatever isn't gonna tell me what's inside that folder, right? So usually what I do, and this is a little trick that I do is when you download it, of course, it's gonna have that little funky name, right? So what I'll do is I will rename that folder to to a description of what that design is, right? For instance, if I bought the um, Puerto Rican flag embroidery file, right? And I download it, when I download, it's gonna have that funky name. So what I'll do is I'll just right click on the folder and then I'll just type in Puerto Rican flag. And then I know that inside that folder is an embroidery file of the Puerto Rican flag. And um, now, Sometimes it can get a little tricky because like when I do my frames, right, for dinner napkins, all right, um, there's a lot of these, okay, and a lot of them have flowers and roses and stuff like that. So what I sometimes try to do is I'll create little folders under napkins and I will create a folder for occasions, right, and then I'll do Christmas, and then what I'll do is I'll do um, in one folder, I'll put Christmas wreath um christmas dinner napkins dinner nap uh christmas uh towels and stuff like that you know try to make it as descriptive as as possible so that way i don't have to go into that actual folder and open up the file now thumb not thumbnailer is supposed to uh work where you can just go and and you know look and and just kind of like click on it and then it in the bottom it shows the picture of it um i stopped using mine but uh yeah i stopped using my thumb and thumbnailer because i started using that navy convection and it kind of works and stuff you know so um yep that's it crafty puerto rican got her channel on there yep and so <laughs> hey Kathy, i live by many militaries so good to know yeah i mean yeah i well my husband's retired air force and um you know and i i work for for the government as well so you know it's like we're it's all government employees and all uh military people around here so you know and you know how i mean i don't know if you guys if any of you guys have um you know um anyone in your families or or husbands or whatever they're in the military they, you know, it's, it's, they, they got that pride thing going on, you know, say, so, um, you know, that, that really, you know, it, it's a big thing for them, you know, when you give them something that has Air Force military, uh, you know, the military symbols or whatever, and, you know, um, they take pride in the units that they serve, you know, so I know my, my neighbor, um, I had the numbers of the five units that he served, so I put that on one side, I put his rank on the other side, and um that i put department of, of the air force emblem in the front 
And one of his units, the last unit that he served, you know, some units in the military divisions have their own logos, their own particular logos and designs, right? So I was able to find the original logo of the time that he served. And, you know, he's kind of up there, you know? <laughs> so, it, you know, it's, it's a long time ago. So, but I was able to find that logo and I was able to um, get it where, you know, it, it was a really good image. And I was able to use the sublimation printer to print it out and then actually put it on the beer mug. So that um, bug, um, he, let me tell you, he, he loves it. Um, you know, he's, he's got it like in, it's, it's like a little shrine. <laughs> it's, it's, you'd be surprised. And I'm sure a lot of you guys know, you'd be surprised that the, the things you do, you know, you to you, it's just crafting and it's just, you know, creating stuff and, and you're having fun. It's, it's sometimes it's not a big deal for you because you're like, oh, it's cute. And, you know, like I'll make a, a kitchen towel because I want to try a new design. And then I'll be like, oh, I think my neighbor Gail will like that. Or let me give this over to uh to Karen, you know, the other neighbor next door, and I'll just create a towel or something um, and I'll put their name on it. I don't think anything of it, you know, because I'm just like, oh, it's, you know, it's a cute towel, you know, they, they can use it. And, you know, and I've already took the picture and I've already put it on, on my Etsy shop or whatever. So what am I going to do with the towel, right? So what I'll do is I, I just gift it to them, you know, because I figure this is something that they can like, but you would be amazed at how much that brightens a person's day and how they really do um it's like they they um if you um in spanish it's it's um you know lo presan, you know like they it's, it's very precious to them you know it's something that that they they just you know they they really hold it dear to their heart so you would be really really surprised you know at some of the things i mean just like uh, Miss Banks, you know, you know, Miss Banks did a bunch of in the hoop, and let me tell you, she she mailed me um, stuff that she did, and this was one of the things that she she did for me. This is like a little makeup case, okay? She put my name on it, you know, and um, and it has these little clean things, you know, um, and I know, sorry, so you guys don't see it. Look at the texture on that, see. Um, she, she made this, she, she made this little spe special package for me and she did my oven, you know, she did a little pot holder and she gave me a, a towel, uh, and I had the towel hanging in my kitchen. And if anybody touches it, I yell at them, you know, because I'm like, don't you touch that. Ms. Banks made that for me. And this is supposed to be to clean my face, you know, take off makeup and everything. But as you can see, I won't use it. I'm not, I can't use it because I, cause. I look at it and, and I think about her, you know, I think about how she took the time to make this for me. The same thing, like when um, Harmony made my face mask with my logo. And I, I'm sure you guys probably, and she's probably tired of hearing about it too, but that is so special. So it's, it's just some, you know, that it's, it's just kind of funny. It's like, we do this for fun. And sometimes, you know, we do it to make a little money on the side or whatever. But when we're making our samples and everything and we, we give them to our friends and stuff, we don't really realize how they uh, they really do uh, hold it so dear to their hearts and stuff. Because, I mean, look, I have it right here. <laughs> I have it right here. And um, and the kitchen towel is, is downstairs. And if anybody touches it out, I'm just like, what are you doing? You know, <laughs> like get, get off the towel. Don't, don't use that one. Use the other one. That one's decorative, you know. So that's that, you know. Every, I kind of like my husband gives me that look, you know, and stuff. Hey Leslie, how are you? Hey Debbie. Yes, that that is it. In raw print now. Um, I got the sawgrass printer, and I got a black box full of free sublimation inks and materials when I purchased, and I haven't used them yet. Oh, Leslie, you're gonna you're gonna have fun with it, but like I said, um, you know, her um it's like it's so unforgiving. It's so unforgiving. But don't worry, I am going to suck it up. I'm gonna do it. I'm going to start. As a matter of fact, I'll probably do a couple of videos of me with this sublimation first so you guys can see. And 
I if I mess up, I'm gonna leave it in the video so you guys be like, I'm not gonna do what she did, you know. <laughs> Cause I'm telling you, and and you know, I still have beer mugs left. So maybe I should do a video on doing uh, another beer mug. Maybe I'll do an Air Force mug for my husband and see how it comes out and stuff. So um, let's see. Hey, Barb, how you doing? Um, let's see. Anything else? Liliana has some great sublimation videos. She does. She does. Oh, my God. And what she did today was phenomenal. You know, yeah, the okay. Hey, Tracy, the dollar store does have the beer mugs for a dollar, but the thing is, with the sublimation ink, you can't just use anything. You have to actually use sublimation blanks because the sublimation blanks come with some special coating to get the ink. It's kind of like, and that's the other thing with the sublimation. Okay, sublimation, you have to do it on polyester shirts now. Some people do have some tricks where they um, they treat a, a, a shirt with some type of chemicals and then they, they'll put the sublimation ink on the shirt. Honestly, me personally, I don't want to do all that. You know, I'm, I mean, I feel like doing more chemical. I'm like, Ugh. you know, I just want to do simple sublimation. Just, you know, I'll, I'll do the polyester shirts and stuff. Now, the only thing also is, with the polyester shirts, they got to be the color white, okay? Now, if you want to use um, shirts of other colors, there's some tricks and stuff like that that you have to use with the ink. And I've seen some folks with the videos do that. Now, I will say this. I have seen some people uh, in some of these Facebook groups, they do phenomenal, phenomenal things with the sublimation. And I know some people do the direct-to-garment and all that kind of stuff, but I don't really want to get into all of that. Um, I really like the sewing and the embroidery. That's really my thing. Um, sometimes too, it's like you could get into so many things and before you know it, it's like you look around and you're like, ooh, you know, it's, it's like, okay, you know, you, you overdid it, you know? So it's kind of like, I, I kind of really like the embroidery thing, you know? So um, I, I want to try to stick to that. The sublimation I got because I was thinking about mugs and um, you know, I was thinking about mugs, and then I saw that you could do, like, little cheese plates and stuff like that. So I was thinking, oh, I could do something like that. And then I could do a shirt here or there using the sublimation ink. Um, you know, like, I, I did a little sweatshirt with, with my logo on it. It came out okay. But, um, you know, it's it's not, it really hasn't been something that, that I have been, like, really, like, ooh, you know, about. So I don't know. I mean, you know, let's see. Um, it's oh thank you uh barb yeah if you guys like this video please give me a thumbs up oh i'm over an hour i'm always over an hour i really do need a mediator or something to tell me when to you know be quiet and stuff i have the thread cart but how many options do you give your customers okay listen this is what i do okay here's an idea let me show you all right let me give you guys an idea. This is how I do it, okay? Now, when the customers come to see me, right, what I usually do is I say, hey, here's the, here's the color card. And then I tell them, look at the colors that have a sticker next to them. And let me see if I can show you. Here we go. Here's one with, here you go. Here's one with a lot of stickers on them. This is what I do. And I'm going to try to put this closer so that you can see. All right. See, see the see that little orange sticker next to the color, okay? Now, that means that this is the color that I have inside the shop right now. Okay? Now, that's what I do. I tell them that. So, you could buy I buy these little bitty stickers and these are the kind of stickers that i kind of help with centering sometimes too when i'm embroidering right but i'll come on and say hey i have this color right now in stock okay you know because because you see that i have the little dot right there right so this one i have right here in stock 
this one. So if you open it up, if you if you see a little dot, that means that I have the thread here. Okay, I'm already ordering it. Now, it depends, you know, I, I tell them, you know, what color are you looking for, right? And, you know, um, I don't have a problem with buying more thread, okay? Because this is how I look at it. Um, especially if it's thread colors that are um, <clears throat> kind of basic that you're going to see you're going to use a lot, like reds greens um browns um different color black sometimes there's a dark black sometimes there's a light light black and stuff like that um those colors i have no problem the customer if the customer wants a particular kind i i can see you know because i can envision not only will i be able to fill that order for that customer but i can do other future orders too as well okay um i'll show them these all right, if they pick something also that um, I don't have, I also have small spools of thread around here, right? And then what I'll do is I'll say, okay, I see you want that kind of purple. Let me see if I have something close to it in stock. And then I'll come upstairs and I'll look through all my racks and I'll see if I have something that's part of Sin Thread because this is, this is the Madeira, okay? These are the Madeira. So if I don't have it in Madeira, I'll look to see, do I have something in one of my small uh, sim threads that will be close to the Madeira color that I'm looking at, right? If And then I'll bring it downstairs and I'll, and I'll ask them, will this work, okay? Now, if they're really stuck on, this is the thread that I want and I'll, I'll order it. I'll, I'll order it because the way I look at it is it's not gonna go to waste. You know, it really isn't because to me, it's, it's um, I'm going to fill the order. And then not only that, it also gives me another color that I can add to future designs. So that's how I look at that, Leslie. I, that's how I look at it, you know. Um, and you got to remember, too, you don't have to buy the big comb, okay? Now, I usually like to buy the big comb, but I buy the big combs on the colors that I know for a fact I use a lot. Up, okay like um th these right here i use a lot of of the browns i use a lot of the blues i use a lot of the reds the greens and all that kind of stuff so if that if it's a color like for christmas christmas um emerald green hot color the red hot color white hot color black <laughs> you're gonna need it those are the ones that you get the big combs but the, you can order the small combs. You can order the small combs. And then um, sometimes if you have a sewing um, shop that's by you, they also sell embroidery thread. They have the small ones and stuff. You you know, if she, you know, they or or he picks a color that you don't have, um, just try to to see if you can find a small, a small comb of that color. And that's that's how I would do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Had it sneeze. Okay, um, what is it that, okay, hey, what is you don't have that thread? Oh, what is it if I don't have that? Th well, I'll order it or, you know, like I said, or I'll try to try to show them the closest color that I have for it. That's usually what I, what I do, um, and stuff. Um. If I have to order a special thread, though, that's done on my thread chart, I charge the customer extra. But, yeah, and Barb's, Barb's right. You can do that, too. Especially, yeah, you can charge the, the customer extra. It's, you know, I would do that, especially if it's a color that I don't per, I don't see in the future that I'm, I'm really going to use that often. You know what I'm saying? Then I would say, yeah. You know, then I, then I would say I, I would definitely go with that. Um, customer service does make a lot of it does it does you get a lot of, of people they only get robbed at the gas <laughs> yeah that's something well i don't know what's going on but a lot of people gonna be walking <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of people walking now and a lot of people gonna be exercising biking and everything i tell you <laughs> i would do that the person is rapper 
is established, but in a Etsy shop, I would limit. Yes, and that's and that's the other thing too. When you have um, if you and I do that too. I do limit. Um, when I do this, if if I'm working with someone on a custom on a custom order and they're local and stuff, and you know that's when I will do this. That's when I pull this out. Okay, but when I'm doing something on Etsy, okay. And like, let's say the blanket, the baby blanket that that I just embroidered. I will I will list the blanket and I will say these are the colors that are available for the fonts. I would do red, blue, black, whatever, right? And just give the colors that you have that you have. You don't have to give them the whole. You don't have to list everything in here. So just just keep it to the basics, okay? And stuff so, because then you know. And this is the other thing too. Sometimes. The more choices you get a customer, the more complicated your order can be, okay? Which is sometimes what I'll do is I'll tell them, you you know, these are the colors that are available, but the ones that have the dots are the ones that are in shop, okay? And then I'll, I have a bunch of the, these other small, small ones and we can find something that's similar. Sometimes it's, it, it can be, it, it can be more of a headache when you provide more options. So some, you know, so that's why when when you when I do my Etsy shop, this is the design. This is the same. The option is what's the name you want. Okay. Um, if you don't want it to say abuela or grandma or granny, whatever, then what's the name you want? And I'll just do personalized and whatever. When on my kitchen towels, I don't give the option of colors. That the design comes in the colors that you see. And the name's going to come in the color that you see in the picture. The only thing I'm changing is the name, okay? If you want something custom, um, you know, um, you know, in, in like the laptop cases, okay? I do laptop cases. Right there, I do offer choices, okay? You, get to, you can pick different colors of the laptop case, and then you can pick different colors of the thread. But I only give you, I only tell the customer, this is how, this is the colors that I have available. And then I always like to work with the customers, especially with the laptop cases, because I want to make sure that they're happy with the color threads they pick, that it'll match nicely with the case color that they chose. Okay, because the cases could be different sizes and it can be different colors. And then sometimes you have to make sure that the case blends with the color of the thread. Okay, sometimes they 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 don't think about it or they forget that, oh my God, I got a, a black case and then they'll say, oh, give me black thread. So I'm kind of like, no, mm. <laughs> you're not even going to see the embroidery. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, sometimes you, you have to, you know, think about the choices that you provide people and stuff because you want to try to make it as less complicated as, as possible. Um. Yeah, and some people would it would be wrong color too, too small, weight, etc. And when and you know what, Nana, the way I see it too is some, when you meet those people, because I, I have met them, that is the order you don't take. When when you know that you have a customer that's pretty difficult, because this I look at it. A lot of times people have the perception that they come to you with a picture, and that the picture is gonna look exactly the same in embroidery. And I tell people. Um, embroidery is stitches, okay? It's stitches, it's thread. It is not a magic marker, okay? It is not the same thing as a magic marker. It has texture in it and stuff like that. So I have to work with the, the digitizer. Not everything can be converted to embroidery, all right? Not every, you know, I mean, I'm sure you can, but not everything's gonna look good. So to me, it's, it's, you know, a lot of times people don't understand that. And that's when you have to like sit there and talk with them and educate them and let them know that sometimes, you know, and, and the thing is, the more you talk, the more you figure out what's important to them. Okay. And then that's when you have to have that relationship also, not just with the, the customer. And there's the other thing, you got to have a good relationship with the digitizer that you pick. Okay. You can't just take a picture and say, here you go, and then get mad at the digitizer because it didn't come out right. You got to make sure that you communicate with that digitizer and say what you're going to do it, you know, what, what you're doing with that, that file, okay? 
Am I going to put it on a hat? Am I going to use it as a logo? Am I going to put it on the back of a jacket? What is the type of material that you're going to be embroidering on? What needles are you going to be using? Do you need small font needles? Are you going to be using 40 weight thread or are you going to be using 60 weight thread? Even tell them the brand of the, of the thread you're going to be using. I'm going to be using some of Synthread, some of Brother. I'm going to use some Madeira. You know, um, all, more information that you can give the digitizer, the better they'll be able to design the file to, to meet the customer's needs, okay? So, you know, and you got to you gotta make sure you have that good relationship with them. You know, so it's like, um, that's why, you know, now I have... If at first, in the beginning, the Facebook group, I saw a lot of people were trying to advertise digitizers and stuff. And I was kind of like taking them out. But then I started to think about it. And I was like, wait a minute, that you know, <laughs> they need to make a living too, you know. And there's a lot of good talent out there, all right. But my whole fear was that the last thing I want is that somebody gets taken. But I have worked with some of these digitizers and they really do good work. So that's why, you know, on the Facebook group, I came out and I said, hey, guys, I want to open this up for, for digitizers, too, because I think I want to give them a chance. Um, you know, the thing is, we just have to be careful who we pick to, to, to use as a digitizer. Make sure that they are true digitizers. Ask them for samples of their work. Ask them if they can provide you a reference of someone that is in our Facebook group that they've worked with before. You know, that way you know how, you know, how they work, if they are really true. Because this is, it's a, you know, the reason why I was, I was kind of like shying away was because I don't, you know, I don't want scammers, right? Um, embroidery is so expensive. You got to buy thread, machine, all this crap, right? The last thing you want is to get scammed by somebody. That's the last thing you want. So, you know, now it's like I want to try to get to know the digitizers that are joining our group. I want to work with them. I want to be able to see, you know, who's got who's got really good talent and everything. So that way we can all work with them, you know, because like it or not, embroidery is really custom work. It really is. I mean, it's a lot of fun to go out there and buy all these embroidery files and try to tweak them and make them your own. But in all honesty, if you're especially if you're doing embroidery as a business, it's mostly custom work. It all is. And you're going to have customers that are going to come in that have their own businesses. They're going to need their logo to be digitized um, so that you can embroil them on polo shirts and everything. You're going to have customers that need special need special um, embroidery done so that they can give them to, as gifts and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, you can't get away from it. You're going to need to somehow find a digitizer that you can work with. The other thing that I always tell people, too, is don't just work with one digitizer. Find two or three of them. And, you know, a quote is free. OK, they don't if, if, if some if there's a digitizer that's charging you for a quote, then you know what? Don't use them. There are so many digitizers out there. So what you can do is take that picture send it to three digitizers and say what's your price and then you know if you and go with whoever gives you the best price and then also also um but also remember this too you know sometimes you pay for what you get okay so so but you want you know you want someone that's fair you want someone that's fair because i have had one digitizer where i i i wanted to reach out to this person and they were very overpriced. And I and when they came back and they were like, well, that's too much. I'm like, heck yeah. I'm like, I got that at half price, you know? And the and the other person did a great job. So, you know, you just gotta you you gotta you gotta um find a digitizer that you you feel comfortable working with and stuff like that. So, you know, um, yeah, but when a customer um is is uh to me a, a problem, um I just I just tell them I'm busy. It, it, it's it's not gonna work out, you know, because <laughs> you you know, it, it can it can backfire on you and stuff. Um, how do you price your items? Hey, Alyssa, um, I do have a video on on pricing your embroidery. I did a whole happy hour on how to how to do a priceless. 
on embroidering I, um, your, your items. I have a price list right here. Okay, you create your own. I did a, a happy hour on that. So um, I would say look at that. It's going to give you lots of ideas to do it. There's a lot of different methods to pricing embroidery. There is a lot of different methods. You got to find out, um, you know, which one you, you which one you want to do. Some people do by stitches. Some people do by time. Some people do by product and stuff. Um, you you have to kind of figure out what where you're comfortable at. Because the way I look at this, it's, it's like getting an embroidery machine. There's no right or wrong. You have to do what's right for you. But this is the one thing that I say. Don't work for free. That's for sure. Okay? You don't work for free. All right. So, um, you know, in, in that in that video, I, I give you guys some ideas of how to break down the pricing, like how to break down the price of your stabilizers. Because remember, stabilizer costs money. Thread costs money. Your time costs money. Your machine costs money. Electricity, everything. So I, I do break it all down. So that way you could build an embroidery price sheet so that when people come to you, you'll know how to calculate it. And be able to price your products okay um some people just can't please no matter what you do and and those are not the people that i deal with <laughs> i'm telling you um jeanette do you have all three yes i do um okay i would Al Alyssa. i am not a digitizer um so i can't really i i don't feel comfortable doing a a review of all three levels if you go over to in brilliance and you look at at um, stitch artists one two and three they do have a description of it the reason why we got it was my husband had bought two two embroidery designs and he wanted one to overlap the other so he thought it was going to be really easy to do to like do like a merge and kind of like curve it and um if if you want to learn digitizing that i would say yeah it's a good investment um for me personally it was not a good investment because i have it but i really don't use it i'm not i'm not much of a digitizer i'm more of a of a machinist i love to to work with the machine and in brilliance essentials and the patches and the density repair that is good enough for me because I really don't like the digitizing part of it, okay? I just want to know enough where I could fix certain things, remove jump stitches and put uh, items together and stuff like that. Creating designs from scratch, not my thing. Um, you know, I would prefer to pay a digitizer to do that work for me um, and me just test the stitch and then keep it going. I mean, that's just, that's me personally. So, I mean, you know, um, what I would, let me see, what I would do, um, Alyssa, is I would probably go on, on YouTube, see, under, look under Lisa Shaw. Lisa Shaw does a lot of videos on a brilliance. Not sure if she has done any in Stitch Artist um, level one, two, and three. She may have, so it doesn't hurt to look. Um, and also, I would recommend looking at um, John Deere um he's a he's a very good um he's he's good in um in uh you know uh in, in digitizing as well he's really good at that um but i believe he uses hatch i'm not sure um i think he uses hatch and then there was there's a there's another gentleman who does digitizing um basic digitizing and it's romero threads i like watching him but he uses hatch as well he's not using in brilliance and stuff so but um Alyssa, if you have a windows machine and you don't have a mac and you haven't bought stitch artists yet i would recommend that you take a look at hatch and wilcon embroidery software because from what I hear, a lot of digitizers use those instead of stitch artists. That's what I hear a lot. So do your research, okay? Because if you have a Mac, you're kind of stuck, okay? Unless you you put Windows on your Mac and then you can run it. But um, you want to, especially if you're interested in digitizing, you want to make sure that you're getting the right software to give you the tools you need so that you can be awesome at it. 
Okay, so you know, do your research. Okay, hey, Barana, um, Gulliopas. Oh, special characters with a font. Oh, oh, I, I guess that's what the these college kids use. Um, those special characters, those letters for uh, so sororities or something like that. Um, I believe that I have seen some um, some fonts like that, Tracy. Um, I have seen it, but um, I haven't personally used them and stuff. Um, that's a good saving. <laughs> oh, thank you. Hey, Liliana. Man, I was, I was bragging about you today, Liliana. <laughs> oh, my God. We... We have been talking about you. I was telling everybody about your um your patch with the sublimation. Man, that came out nice. <laughs> and how you called me up, girl. I gotta work on my sublimation printer. I gotta I gotta make use of that machine. So I gotta I gotta suck it up and do it. How you doing, girl? And stuff. So, oh my god, her her thing came out like it was it was rich. I was just like. Look at that. I was like, that girl, that girl got it. Liliana's the bomb. I want to be Liliana. I got to go to Minnesota one day to visit her. <laughs> I want to spend a weekend with her in the shop and stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, everybody's like, she's been talking about you. I have Liliana because, oh, my God, that was beautiful what she did today. I was, I was like, wow. Okay. Hey, Norma. What is no show mesh? Okay, Norma, no, no show mesh is a stabilizer that people usually put inside of shirts that are pretty thin. Um, this is this is no show mesh. Okay, it what it does is it has adhesive on it, right? And you iron it to your shirt, and what it does is it kind of helps your shirt. Um, give it a little strength and stability so that when you are embroidering, it doesn't shift because, you know, clothes, clothes stretch, right? They kind of stretch and everything. So when you're embroidering on things like cotton that doesn't have that stretch, you don't, you know, you, you don't have to um, worry too much about the, the machine moving back and forward and, and the, the, the fabric shifting too much. But when you have like clothes and stuff like that, um, this is very, very stretchy fabric. So you put this on it so that, and, and it has um, adhesive and you iron it on and it's so that it could help keep that shirt in place, you know, the fabric in place so that it can um, embroider nice. Cause the last thing you want is for the fabric to shift and then it kind of messes up your design. So this is what, that's what no-show uh, mesh is, okay? Yeah, Marley, yeah, it, and Liliana has been playing with the Marley patches too. And um, yeah, they're, I'm telling you, I, I really need to get into these patches. I want to buy a uh, twill fabric um, because I heard twill, twill fabric is what a lot of people use. And I saw some people are using plastic. And Liliana had a video on the plastic, but I am so confused about that plastic. So I'm kind of like, what? So I got to figure that out, you know, and stuff. Because I really would like to get into patches because I know that patches are very, very, very profitable. Um, yep, Robin got it. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't show through the front. Yes. Yes. Robin got it. Uh, love and brilliance when you buy what you need as you need it. Yes. And that, Anita, you are so right. And that's what I did too. I just thought, um, when I started with them brilliance, I just bought first, you know, I just did the essentials. And then as time went on, I started to learn about the modules. And then I was like, could I use that? Like, um, enthusiast, enthusiast has the knockdown stitches. And when you are embroidering on stuff with a lot of fuzz, you want knockdown stitches. So I went, and I bought enthusiast. So yeah, it's, um, She's here. Yeah, Liliana's on. <laughs> Thanks for the support. Um, you're welcome, girl. Shoot, I learned so much from you. 
and stuff. And, and I get to learn, you know, practice my Spanish because I don't have nobody to talk Spanish with over here. So I'm like, ugh. And so and then when I go talk to my mom, she yells at me because she tells me, Se te está you know, she's, that's, you're forgetting your Spanish. But it's because I don't have anybody to practice. So, you know, she kind of gets mad because Spanish was the first language that I learned because we were not allowed to speak English I mean, at home unless there was someone that came home, you know, that, that was visiting. If they didn't know Spanish, then the rule was no one was to talk Spanish. We had to talk English because that's rude. So my mom was, you know, my mom and dad were like, you never speak another language in front of people if they don't understand that language because that's just flat out rude. You don't do that. Okay. Which is true. You know? So when we were at home, it was always Spanish. We never spoke English unless we had a visitor. And if we had a visitor, then it, the, the Spanish was off and it was all English. Um, but I actually learned English when I went to kindergarten. Um, you know, and then when I started kindergarten and people were talking English, I was like, what the heck? Because I was always around, you know, my family, they all, we all spoke nothing but Spanish. So now that I'm I'm big, whatever, and I'm living here in Virginia, I don't have anybody to talk Spanish with. <laughs> Because they got Spanish people here in Virginia, but the people that I'm always around is they they they're not Hispanic, so I don't know why you practice with. So you know, but I like watching Liliana because she does her videos in Spanish, so I'm like, oh, I understand her, you know. So, <laughs> and then I have to do the Spanish to English translation um, because I don't know how to read or write it. I just know how to speak it and I understand it. So when I try to participate in her chat. I have to do the translation and stuff. But anyway, it's fun. I, I like doing it, you know. Um, Minnesota is beautiful. My daughter lives in Minneapolis. You know, I would even love to go to Quilt Town. I want I want to do that. That's one of the, the bucket lists that I have. Um, Quilt Town. I think that's in Minneapolis, I think. I'm not sure. I don't know where quilt tennis, but it's something that I want to do and stuff. All you need to do is in Brillis Essentials. That's what I got. And it got it to work perfect. Oh, Liliana, do you have uh Liliana, do you have a uh, stitch artist level three? Because someone asked if they you needed to have that in order to use uh Merlo, Merly, Merly, um, but I have Stitch Artist 3, so it worked for me. But if you don't have Stitch Artist 3 and it works, then I think then that's the answer. That is right. The funk names of the software are harder to decipher. Yeah. Okay. I renamed the folder. Yeah, I do that too. I didn't need to purchase windows I can see without opening them. Let me see, I have mm, extra large. I call no nothing presses, no birthday, no Christmas, no nothing day. People are static. <laughs> can you embroider a face mask? Yes, um, you can. You can embroider a face mask. I've seen a lot of people do that, and I, I've done it too. At the beginning of the pandemic, though, I wasn't doing it because one of the things that I was um, concerned about was the holes in the fabric. OK, that's um, something that that kept in my mind because I was making the face mask and I was kind of like doubling them up. And, you know, the thing is not to let the air go in and out because, you know, in the beginning of the pandemic, you know, it was kind of like, oh, my God, you know, <laughs> so I didn't want anyone to get sick. So. When people were asking me to embroider face masks at first, I was kind of like, I don't want to do it because, and I would tell them it makes holes in the fabric and I don't want like you to like wear it and then you go, go get sick, you know, because I, I I don't know too much about the virus to, to know if it was going to go in the, the mask. So I wouldn't embroider it. What I would do is I would um, do heat vinyl transfer and I would... Um, you know, use my Cricut and I would do that. And then I would iron the name on the, the face mask for them. That's what I was doing. But um, I did towards the end, as people started getting vaccinated and everything, I figured eh, it's okay. What I would do is I would just embroider one 
side and then I would sew it together. So that way they had the fabric inside that was not embroidered and didn't have any holes in it and stuff like that. But, you know, I kind of, you know, I was like, okay, if you're okay with that, you know, and stuff. And then I would just tell them, put a tissue or something in there. So that way, you know, cause you, you never, you don't know, you know? <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't want people getting sick and stuff. So yeah, black dot, um, you can embroider a face mask if you want. Melo looks so cute back there. Yeah, he is, um, oh my God. Look at him. He is one relaxed dog, I tell you. Hello. Oh, he's out. Yeah, look at him. Lying there. Not, not a care in the world. You could tell. Not a care in the world. And stuff. If there's reincarnation is a thing, I want to die and come back as him. That's what I want to do. Because as you can see, he's relaxed. He's on his back. He's like that. Mello. Man, he's asleep. He does not want to be bothered. Have you ever tried to embroider on a mouse pad? No, um, you know, Black Dog, I don't think people use mouse pads anymore. I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, even at work, at my job and stuff like that, you know, I mean, I don't even think we have mouse pads. I mean, people just use these regular things because it has the light and they just like move that so but no i haven't um done the mouse pads and stuff but um you know i'm gonna be honest with you i you know that did you mention that i don't even see people using those things anymore um so fun uh mediator me mediator marley you know what i mean <laughs> my english is all it's funny because i tell people my English is bad and my Spanish is bad. So I just talk genetic. That's it. <laughs> my words come out all jacked up and stuff. Um, when you oh, when you know we like when you run over. Yeah, I'm oh my goodness, I'm not two hours. I'm telling you, man, we should just call this embroidery evening, you know. <laughs> because I really don't know when to shut up, you know. <laughs> we should just call it our embroidery evening and stuff. Um See, I did a couple of mugs with infusible ink that came out nice. See, I've done the mugs too. The mugs I have no problem with. It's just certain things that I'm kind of like, I don't know. And so it's a great idea to put a sticker for what color you have. Yeah, and those stickers are really um good. And I use those stickers for a lot of things. I use them to 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 um, you know, when when I'm embroidering a shirt, you gotta find the center, just fold it in half. Um, iron it, you have a little crease or whatever, but then sometimes I'll put a little sticker right there in the, the, the center. So that way I know that that's the, the center part and stuff. So, um, yeah, God bless. Oh, thank you, Debbie. Hey, Eddie B, how are you? Um, let me see. It is late, guys. I sent a picture to digitize. had no idea what it entailed, and she was kind enough to point out why it wouldn't work see and that's a good that see that to me is a good debbie that's a good digitizer to me because you know that means that she's honest and and she's willing to to help you i like that and stuff see here for hours great teaching from you jay and friends in the group good night stay blessed but uh bye miriam how um let me see oh yeah it's nighttime we gotta go we gotta go i just want to make sure i get everybody um did your mask? I did look at anyone recommend first before sending money. Some of them were out of the country and didn't trust them. Yeah, I do have some some um that are out of the country, Tracy. Like um, I use Fazil sometimes. If Fazil is out of the country, but I've never had an issue with him. Um, he'll always just send me an invoice through PayPal and stuff. So um, but yeah, always look for recommendations, okay? And stuff always um be be always careful because. You know, there's a lot of a lot of stuff out there. You know what I'm saying? And you want to make sure that, you know, that you're not getting scammed or anything like that. And so especially now, you know, it's tough times and everything, you know. So um, oh, she does good. Lisa Shaw has videos on uh Stitch Artist 3. So awesome. That's good. Thank you for looking at that and stuff. Okay, so guys, I am gonna say good evening um right now because I know it's it's getting late. It really is. Um, 
you know, and stuff. I mean, I'm going on two hours and stuff. I, I talk too much. I'm sorry. But anyway, guys, I do like, I have fun with you guys on Fridays. Nice. I really, really, really do. I mean, I like spending time with you guys, answering questions, helping you guys out, and also showing you stuff that I'm doing. You know, I really do. But um, as, as always, you know, if you guys are new to this channel, please subscribe. Um, if you like this video tonight, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out a lot. And also, if you haven't been part of our Facebook group, please join. It's called Embroidery Happy Hour Adventures. And it's a great place for us to share our work, share advice, and everything. I know Liliana's always posting stuff out there, really great stuff that she puts out there. She puts out a lot of positivity and all that kind of stuff. Love it. The Crafty Puerto Rican, sometimes she puts her videos on there, too. So if you guys have a video, even yourself, of showing how to do stuff, um, you know, and the Crafty Puerto Rican, she has her own channel as well, too. And she's got some good videos and stuff. So please subscribe to her as well. But if you guys have anything that you want to share with everybody, please, please, please post it out there because we're all here to help each other and learn and stuff. So I would really, really love it for all of us to, um, you know, to share it and stuff and really help each other grow. All right. So you guys have a great weekend and um, enjoy enjoy the rest of the, the week also. And I will see you guys next Friday at eight o'clock. And thank you so much for all the support and everything. I appreciate all you guys. So I'll talk to you guys later. Because as you can see, um, this guy is out. So I guess it's bedtime for all of us over here. So I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.